Keep watching Charis TV. Let's read Genesis 19. Are you booking a Genesis? Chapter 19. From verse 9. <coughs> Let's read. Verse 9. But they said, Get out of the way. And they said, This man, meaning Lot, came as an outsider to live here temporarily. And now he is acting like a judge. Now we will treat you worse than your, than your visitors. So they rushed forward and pressed violently against Lot and came close to breaking down the door of the house. Carry on reading, Mama. But the men, meaning angels, reached out with their hands and pulled the Lord into their house with them and shut the door after him. They struck, meaning punished the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness from the young men to the old men so that they ex exhausted themselves trying to find the doorway. And the two men, meaning angels, asked Lord, have you any others here in Sodom, a son-in-law and your sons and your daughters, whoever you have in the city, take them out of here, for we are destroying this place because the outcry for judgment against them has grown so great before the Lord that the Lord has sent us to destroy and ruin it. So Lord went out and spoke to his sons-in-law who were betrothed and legally promised to marry his daughters. And he said, get up, get out of the place for the Lord is about to destroy this city. But to his sons-in-law, he appealed, he appeared to be joking. When morning dawned, the angels urged the Lord to hurry, saying, Get up, take your wife and two daughters who are here, and go, or you will be swept away in the punishment of the city. But Lord hesitated and lingered. The men took hold of his hand and the hand of his wife and the hands of his two daughters, because the Lord was merciful to him for Abraham's sake. And they brought him out and left him outside the city with his family. Let's stop there. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's write God's kindness. I just want us to look at his kindness. There's a scripture there Mama read that says God did all this because he was remembering Abraham. Read, read that verse. Abraham. Just read that verse you were reading. Mama. You have read the last verse, I'm sure. Second from last. It says, when morning dawned, the angels urged Lord to hurry, saying, get up, take your wife and two daughters uh -huh. who are here and go, or you will be swept away in the punishment of the city. But Lord hesitated and lingered. The man took hold of his hand and the hand of the wife and the hands of the two daughters because the Lord was merciful to him for Abraham's sake. And they brought that? him out. Did you hear that? Amen. That verse is God had kindness <inaudible> with Lot because of Abraham. Abraham. <inaudible> Sometimes you, you need to understand <inaudible> the meaning of kindness. Now. That kindness <inaudible> when God practice it on you. He is not looking at your righteousness. 
you could see that Abraham was mentioned here. In other words, God had a mind of saying, what is it that Abraham will say? If I allow Lord to die, it's okay. Here, according to God's standards, Lord, Lord could not escape the punishment. I can tell you the reasons why. Number one, he was outside when the angels were there. And to extend that, the angels pull him in and strike the people who were there with blindness. If we can check, the Bible says, now, Lord hesitated. In other words, time was finished. Lord hesitated but the kindness of God the kindness of God made the angel to carry him the Bible says he lingered he, he, he was doing like that I used to see that when, I, when we were having a church like, I, you know many people who linger going to church are ladies when you have a wife, you see a wife going there. She wants to, want to, want to go to church with her house. So, this thing happened to Lord. Lord did you know what to take now? He wants to take this. Can I carry this? Can I, can I do this? But now, the punishment was on the way. I don't know if you're hearing that. And God's kindness came to Lord to extend that he was carried out. Amen. Amen. The last thing that we didn't read here, which shows God's kindness, the angels say, hey, can you see that city there? Run there. Do you know there was a small town called Zua? The Bible says, Lord said, if I'm going there, I will fail. It's better you take me to a small town which is close here. And the Bible says, that town also was spared because of Lord. God could not destroyed that town because of the kindness that he has showed to Lord because of Abraham. I will tell you this. But you don't know about that. I began to understand the reasons that it's not all my prayers that work for myself. All right, last time I told you this thing. This man, who was, was my spiritual father, who still my spiritual father, was a prophet. We had a meeting in the church. Meeting. And he said, he stood up, and say, Mbare. I'm seeing Charis crossing the border. He was not having a base like now. As not a personal in Chila would tell a little loud to Shabola. He was I'm seeing Charis crossing the border. And then when I was sitting there, I heard a louder voice. Ah, Naki Duchiana Mola, Catalin Chili Rolo. It says, It will happen in your time. It will be a halakana quaya how. I look around. Who said this? I asked, did you hear anything? I found it was only me. But the promise was given to this man. I don't know if you're hearing me. But the fulfillment is happening to me. In other words, when God's kindness 
started to work in you. You are the fulfiller of the promise. My friend, the fulfillment of God will be seen in your life. The fulfillment of the promises you will see that happening When God gives you that kind of your prayer won't work. Your prayer won't work. It's someone's prayer that is going to work for you. Because otherwise, kindness of God won't be kindness of God. You, when you are checked, you are not fit to when come out. When you are fit, you are not checked to reach there. But there's a promise that was given. Same applies to the word of God. It is the promise of God in our life. But we have to see it be fulfilling in our lives. God has to give us kindness so that all the promises will be yes and amen in our lives. Even if you are shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I've learned that, that I began to understand that, oh, that is why people began to have spiritual fathers. Because they are, the fathers have been given promises. And now the sons, that when they come under, they want to fulfill what the father was given. Sometimes we are insulting the issue of, hey, there's no of spiritual fathers. There's no things like that. Hey, there's kindness of God here. When I come here under the umbrella of this father who has been given a promise, I'm coming to say, God, I want to fulfill let what you told this man happen to me. I don't know if you're hearing me. It's time now that you begin to experience the kindness of God. Because by your ability, you're a failure. I don't know if you're hearing me. By your ability, you're a failure. I was, I was looking at myself. I said, my God. Because not long I was told this thing. I even told my man Andres. I said, Andres, I was told something. In fact, I started to tell my mama. There was something like this that was happening. But I saw you pray. And I was shown that and you can see where you are. We are one it's not because of your prayers only. You know, I, on that time, I, Mama was sitting there, but I'm here Mama singing a bishi. And uh, when Mama said, I'm lifting my hand like this. And uh, when I'm doing like this, I'm saying, Mama, carry on praying. I'm hearing that your prayers are the ones that are working for me here. Yeah. I don't know if you're hearing I me. I just want to tell you that out of your prayers, you won't go anywhere. You are there to change your generation. There are things that you will change by yourself. But there are things that you need the kindness of God. I see the kindness of God manifesting in your life this week. I say it will manifest in your life this week. I just want to show you from other scriptures. Because it seems as if I would talk a lot today, but I said I don't talk too much. Let's read Isaiah 54. Let's read Isaiah 54. Verse 1. Verse 1. We won't read all scriptures, but 1 to 8. Verse 1 to verse 8. It says. Uh -huh. Shout for joy, O barren one. Yes. She who has, no, who has not given birth, break forth into joyful shouting and rejoice. She who has not gone into labor with child for the spiritual sons of the desolate one 
will be more numerous than the sons of the married woman. Of the married woman, says the Lord. Stop there. I just want us to look at a verse like this. Shout for joy. Oh, barren one. Rejoice because you are about to overtake the one who can naturally have the fruits of the womb. When the kindness of God comes, the natural issues, the natural ability will be really be defeated. Shout for joy because naturally you are defeated. Naturally you can have you cannot be rich. Naturally, you cannot have a child. But when the kindness of God comes, you will have sons and daughters. I don't know if you're hearing me. In fact, I want to prophesy someone. People might be laughing at you, not understanding that you are not understanding that you're not barren. But the kindness of God this week is going to locate you. I say it's going to locate you. Have you ever find yourself overtaking people? To extend that God says, shout for joy. You parent, you failure. Can you just read, continuing, Mama? Verse 2. Uh -huh. Enlarge the site of your tent to make room for more children. Stretch out the curtain of your dwelling. Mm -hmm. Do not spare them. Lengthen your tent ropes and make your pegs stakes firm. In the ground. Mama, here, this is the message to a barren woman. When, when kindness of God starts to work in you, you are like a crazy person. Think about someone say, I'm building houses for my children, but it's barren. The Bible says, extend your territory. Extend your territory. Now I'm understanding that when the kindness of God is upon you, you can achieve things that other people have never achieved. Enlarge your territory. Why? Because what people think you won't have, you are going to have it in number. Have you ever find that you don't have anything? The kindness of God is about to come to you. You are going to build a house that nobody has ever done. Look here. Here is the message of a barren one. Someone who stays lonely. Nothing is around. No ability. But the Bible says the kindness of God has come to you now. It looks like you know, in the church like this, we are still having a small building. If, if we are looking at the kindness of God. Because when the kindness of God approaches us, and we are given that kindness, this place is very small. I don't know if you're hearing me. I said, the place we are in is very small. The house you are staying in is very small. The, house you are, the car you are driving is very small. It looks, it has searched for your naturality. But the kindness of God is about to manifest. Let's read, continue going down, Mama. It says what? For you will spend out to the right and to the left, mm -hmm. and your descendants will take possession of nations. Your and will mm. and will inhabit deserted cities. My God, carry on reading. Do not fear, for you will not be put to shame, and do not feel humiliated or ashamed, for you will make you will not be disgraced, for you will forget the shame of your youth. Mm. 
and you will no longer remember the disgrace of your widowhood. Mm. Do not be ashamed because of what happened when you were young. The disgrace that you can face, do not be ashamed of it. God is about to do a new <inaudible> thing in, in your life. life. I'm talking about God's kindness. I mean, shame will leave you. Shame will leave you. Poverty will leave you. Failure will leave you. I don't know what you're facing there. Because when we look at your history and geography, people can make you a joke. But this is what God wants to change. We have compassion with you. I don't know if you're hearing me. Amen. Mama, just read the last verse. You are reading which verse? I, I was reading chapter verse 4. Carry on reading. For your husband is your maker. Mm -hmm. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, who is called the God of the whole earth. Mm. Six. For the Lord has called you like a wife who has been abandoned, grieved in spirit, mm. and like a wife married in her youth, when she is later rejected and scorned, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you. But with great compassion and mercy, I will gather you to myself again. Listen to this. Compassion and mercy are the product of what we are talking about. When God looked at you and give you compassion <inaudible> and mercy, when he does that, it's because of, let me just, of his kindness. Compassion and mercy. You look at you and say, no, you cannot go through all this. But the fruit of God's kindness is compassion and mercy. Where you are waking, God will look at you and give you compassion and mercy. And from there, you will be surprised those who cannot promote you. They will even confess that we didn't want to promote you. But because God is involved, they are about to do it. If you are hearing me shout, hallelujah. Yeah, you were like rejected. I mean, widow. A young widow. Who, you know, if, you want to see, if you want to see rejection, let your husband die when you are young. A rejected widow. Hey, God says, I have left you like a rejected widow. But this time, I'm giving you compassion and mercy. I'm here for you. In other words, where you feel like you're a failure, you are not a failure. Where you feel like you cannot move forward, you will move forward. When God gives you his kindness, I see the kindness of God here. I have experienced it. Sometimes it's not our ability that we reach where we are. Sometimes we need to consider his kindness. It is the mercy of God that God gives you. You rise up to a level where no one can reach. I don't know if you're hearing me. 
I see God's kindness in your life. This year, people will know that He is with you. And so they will know He is with you. Because how can you go through all this? Still, you are still breathing. There, there are some stories hey. that if you can tell people, they will think, how can you tolerate this? God has allowed it. And he has allowed you to reach that far. To, to prove he is with you. I, 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 I see the hand of God upon you. I see the hand of God upon you. If you are, if you are hearing me shout hallelujah. Let, let's jump here. I think there's a lot of stories here. Maybe you can read the last verse of 8. Listen to that in verse. an outburst of wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. I hid my face <laughs> for a moment. When you are doing mistakes and like this, <laughs> and punishment is supposed to come, I hid my face for a moment. Can you, see, can you see the kindness of God? Now you seen, you did this and that. Nothing happened to you. No, he hid his face. Because where God oh. look, judgment comes. When he look at you, angels must come. Or, or demons can come. I don't know if you're hearing me. They have to be accusation. You are not fit for this place. God says, I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, I had compassion on you. I had compassion on you, Psalm 51, verse 1. To Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God. According to your loving kindness. According to the greatness of your compassion. Lord, out to my transgression. Verse 3, 4. I'm conscious of my transgression and I acknowledge them. My sin is always before me. Yeah. David was saying, I have done wrong, but I deserve punishment. But it's only your kindness that will give me mercy. I understood why David could not face many problems. It's when, when you start to understand God's kindness, even the wrong that was done by you cannot be counted. He says, my sins are before you. I deserve punishment. Some people, when they reach there, they get punishment. But you, you reach there, you pass. I don't know if you're hearing me. This year, you will pass where others has not passed. I, I see some people here. The kindness of God will work in your life. To so extend that you will pass where others has not passed. Sometimes we have mistakes that we have committed because we think about our abilities that we can do it by our own. And those mistakes has cost us a lot. But listen, as long as you didn't die, you are still alive. God can rectify it for you. I see God giving you kindness. He's giving you his kindness. I'm sure you heard my story. I want to finish by giving you this Because I'm talking my stories here. 2 Timothy 1, verse 16 to 18. Timothy 1, verse 16 to 18. In fact, I want to preach this issue of God's kindness even next week. 
Maybe until I see God's kindness here. Second Timothy 1, verse 16 to 18. Verse 16 to 18. Uh -huh. It says, The Lord grant mercy to the family of Ones, sorry, Onesi for us because he of, or often refreshed me and showed me kindness, comforting and reviving me like fresh air. And he was not ashamed of my chains for Christ's sake. But instead, when he reached Rome, he eagerly searched for me and found me. Amen, amen. Amen. How can we get God's kindness? We can see a man on his forest here. On his forest, Moki. He was taking care of the man of God <inaudible> when he was arrested. <inaudible> he stood with him <inaudible> on his shame. <inaudible> to extend that, he <inaudible> says, <inaudible> the whole family on his forest, let them have mercy. May the kindness of God work in them. You can get God's kindness by the prayers of other people. You have showed them mercy. Those who have showed them kindness, they pray for kindness. I don't know if you hear me. You receive kindness when you show kindness. Let me show you another thing that you can get kindness in. Matthew 6, from verse 2 to 4. Matthew 6, 2 to 4. The another thing of getting kindness. So, whenever you give to the poor and do acts of kindness, do not blow a trumpet before you mm -hmm. to advertise it. So the hypocrites do like actors acting out of a role in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be honored and recognized and praised by men. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, they already have their reward in full. Can you hear but that? when you give, can you, can you hear this? Like what about you? Charitable acts. Midiro. When you are doing charity, do it in secret. Because God who sees in secret sees you. There are some people here who need your money. Who need your support. When you are doing that without telling others. God will give you that kindness. You know, I saw that in Acts 9. If we read from verse 36 to 43. I found that kindness will speak for you. Your kindness will speak for you. In Acts 9, 36. We see a lady called Tabitha there. Who died. And Peter was called to Petra pray for him. And the Bible said they showed when Peter reached there, the widows and other people who were there showed Peter tunics. And said, Look at this clothes. This is what this woman did for us. I want to tell you that your kindness will speak for you. Hallelujah. Amen. You will find God's kindness. There are miracles that will never happen until you become kind for yourself. Resurrection came to this woman because she showed kindness. I believe I believe, I'm sorry to tell you that. I believe when people are crying, they are telling God something about 
If you are hating people and they are crying, one day you are going to get a message. If people are happy with what you are doing, them, also, God will be happy for you. you whatever you you saw you you reap. Let us be very careful. Let's show our kindness. Let's go and show kindness. Let's go and show what? Kindness. Sometimes you don't need to listen to this. You don't need to take money to church only. Go with and buy food. Search for the people who are poor. Who have, been, who have needs. Bless those people. Bless them. And see what will happen. There's a kindness of God that will locate you. Lift up your hands. I want to stop there. Ask God to help you, to help you today. Say, Holy Father, Holy Father, I've been lacking to be kind. I've been lacking to be kind to other people. To other people. Today, today, give me your kindness. Give me your kindness. Let me love other people. Let me love other people. As you also give me kindness. As you also give me kindness. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Rebelling. Lord, give us kindness. Give us kindness. Give us kindness. I'm not kind. Give, give me kindness. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Look here. The moment when you start to be kind, what I will say here, there are some people who demand things from you, demand things from you. Don't be tired. God is showing you what he's showing me. That My people are hungry. My people are suffering. Lift up your hands again. Say, Father, guide me. Father, guide me. Speak with me. Speak with me. To the people who are searching for to my kindness. To the people who are searching for my kindness. Guide me to the people. Guide me to that the people. That I will show my kindness. Prayer. I will show Pray. my kindness to. Prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to say congratulations. Amen. This week, this week, okay. the kindness of God will locate you. I said the kindness of God. I said will locate you. What is it that you want God to do for you? Where others could not pass, you will pass. You, people will die here. And you find yourself, are you alive? I don't know if you're hearing me. The Bible says you will see that by your eyes. You will see the reward of the wicked. You will see the reward of the wicked. Lift up, lift up your hands again. Begin to thank God for God's kindness in your life this week. Thank God for the kindness of God in your life this week. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. In Jesus' mighty name. I want to say congratulations. God bless you.